So it's not every day that your favourite console turns 30. So in this video, in a little celebration of the Sega Mega Drive, I'm going to be doing a mod. Uh, if you want to skip forward to the mod section, um, I'll leave a timestamp in the description. But uh, we're going to have a little chat before we get into it about the Sega Mega Drive itself. So as many of you may know, I'm pretty much Sega mad. Um, I have nearly every version of the console. Um, I have two Game Gears, a Dreamcast, my Sega Mega Drive and a Sega Saturn. Uh, this is my daily driver Sega Mega Drive. Um, I got it, it was already pretty beaten up, but I decided to mod it. But as you can see where I added the mod switches, it's not in a great place. Um, if you ever wanted to use the uh, Mega CD attachment, they're kind of in the way. But uh, I picked it up for a good price and uh, it does the job for my day to day stuff. Now I have more than one Mega Drive console. This is my original console that it's going to remain unmodded and untouched. Uh, and I recently picked up this boxed uh, Mega Drive uh, Model 1 recently. Uh, poster's still there, still in great nick. But here's the console we're actually going to be modding. I picked this one up um, from Japan. Uh, it's a Japanese early model Japanese Sega Mega Drive. And this is the one that we're going to be using to mod uh, later on. The Sega Mega Drive was released in Japan on October 29th, 1988, just in time for Christmas. Later, it would be released in America in 1989, and here in Europe in 1990. Work began on the console in 1986. The director of Sega's R&D department, Hideki Sato, began a project with the goal of bringing the arcade experience into the home. Sato put a now legendary engineer, Masami Ishikawa, in charge of designing the new 16-bit console. Ishikawa's previous 8-bit design the Sega Master System had seen a relative success in most markets apart from North America, where it failed to gain traction. Hideki Sato suggested that Ishikawa use the new Motorola 68000 processor as part of the new 16-bit console. It was also decided early on that the Zilog Z80 CPU from the Master System would also be included in the design. This would allow backwards compatibility giving players access to the Master System's large catalogue of games. The Z80 along with the Yamaha YM2612 FM synthesizer would be the backbone of the audio circuitry and normal operation. It was a very different time for console design. Today, hardware developers often consult some of the top names in software and tools and game development to ensure an efficient development pipeline. Back in the 8 and 16-bit days, console designers worked very much behind the scenes. The early decision of using the 68000 CPU proved to be a hit. The processor would also be used in other systems at the time, like the Amiga 500, the NEC Turbo Graphics, and in a lot of arcade game boards. The Mega Drive was the right design at the right time. Due to the popularity of the CPU in use, there was an abundance of talented programmers with knowledge of the hardware. This made the development of games for the platform easier, and it relatively easier to port games from other 68000 based systems over. Developers like Traveller's Tales and others pushed the hardware to the limits, achieving what some thought impossible on a 16-bit home console. Hideki Sato would go on to be Vice President of Sega, and Masami Ishikawa went on to Sega's arcade division, uh, where he oversaw the development of the Naomi hardware. The same system architecture was then used years later in the Dreamcast. Uh, so if you owned a Dreamcast, or if you were in an arcade in the late 90s, uh, early 2000s, chances are you played on a Naomi system. So it's thanks to the hard work of these two men and their colleagues at Sega that the Mega Drive became part of so many of our childhoods. So this was going to be the part of the video where I take the Mega Drive apart and show you the uh, board revision number and talk through kind of some of the places where you can go online, some of the resources you can get to find out um, details about your board's revision and what traces to cut. But then this happened. Okay guys, so I've got my uh, Sega Mega Drive here open. This is the Asian unit. 
and you, some of you may notice straight away that there's a daughter board sitting up here with an oscillator. Um, I'll try and get a good picture of it for you. Sorry about the light now. You can see that the jumper settings are actually on that side of the board and we have this oscillator um, set up here. Now from what I believe this is a very early version of the Mega Drive. When these were about to go on sale they got a prototype of um, an early version of Sonic the Hedgehog and tried to run it on it and because of a problem with the um, crystal oscillator um, it wasn't running fast enough so they had uh, this kind of bodge board on top um, hooked in to try and get it to work um, so that the units would go out and they kind of push straight into the into uh, VA0 or VA1 version of the board so I had stated at the outset that I was going to do the mod on this one but this board is too unique it's it's even though when I got it I, it ha didn't have an RF uh, shield on it but I don't think this ever had an RF shield um, I think it's a very very early version of the board and I'm not going to mod it it's too unique um, um, I remember even Ishikawa talking about how he put this carbon uh, finish on his design that he regretted because it um, slowed the expansion port down and that was removed in later revisions uh, once he had moved on to other projects so no we're not going to do anything to this it's too unique it's too it's too much a piece of Sega history I guess to go messing with um, we do have the PAL Mega Drive um, that I picked up the other day it's in great shape it's a lovely uh, console in its own right so um, we'll fit the mod to that one instead. Um, I want to talk a bit more about um, about this Mega Drive before we move on to the other PAL version that we're going modding. Um, on some of these earlier Asian Mega Drives, this piece here, this solid, solid red piece that would be white on a PAL system or red on a Genesis, well this doesn't pop out. In, the difference with these is this entire plastic ring that goes around the uh, cartridge port area and the and the 16-bit logo comes out all in one piece. That's one piece of plastic. This is just paint here. Okay, moving on. Um, just because, as I said before, I'm a bit of a Sega nut, so I know um, a little about these serials. Um, I'll give you a shot of it there, so the aficionados following along at home can have a look. Um, so that's 88M81687. Okay, so the first number is the factory number. So that's factory 8. I don't know which factory that is. I used to. I'll have to look it up. The second number is the year. So if that had said 9, it was 89. So this is a 1988 model. This is the same model that was released 30 years ago, nearly to the day. Yeah, guys, so the more I look into this, um, there's absolutely no way I'm modding this. This came out literally you know um in you know this was a launch console there's no way i'm i'm going to uh, mod this console it's just it's a launch console no nope, not happening we're moving on we're going to do in the pal So it was nice to be able to have a look at a, an original uh, Sega Mega Drive, uh, the launch version of the console, um, the VA0 as it's called. But moving on to the mod, um, you may be asking yourself why I'm doing the Sega Mega Drive Plus Plus mod. Well the Plus Plus mod is uh, about as non-invasive and non-destructive as possible. Um, doesn't require hacking the case, putting buttons in there. Um, it has a reset functionality via the control pad. Um, you can switch region via the control pad. Um, and it's reversible. Any alterations we do can be undone. Now, we are going to be cutting some traces. That's unavoidable. But um, I want to do it as neat as possible and in a way that's completely reversible. Um, so that's the major reason for doing the Sega Mega Drive Plus Plus mod. So guys, let's go over some of the stuff you're going to need for the mod. Um, starting off, the most important thing is the Arduino Nano. Now there's other versions um, 
of the Arduino that you could use. You could even just use the microcontroller if you have um, a serial programmer. But the neatest and the kind of most advised way on GitHub where you can get the code for this is to use the Nano. It has all the outputs so you get all the features of the Mega Drive Plus Plus. So that's the main thing, that's the, that's the most important thing. It also has a USB programmer, the Nano, so um, you don't have to program over serial, you don't have to put, uh, change the voltage to, um, to program it because that can be a problem. Often people fry their Arduinos just by um, programming them uh, with the wrong voltage settings. Uh, with that, um, I'm using an RGB um, LED. Now this one's a bit large, but um, there's a difference really between the Asian uh, Mega Drive case and the European case that I'll cover later on. Um, you want to get yourself some nice wire. I have a 26 gauge and 30 gauge here. Anything between there is fine. I generally use um, the larger gauge for power and ground and then signal wires will all be uh, the 30 gauge. Then you're going to need yourself a craft knife to cut some of those traces. Um, with that said, I like to, well, I don't usually do it, I usually use something else, but for this I'm going to use solder mask, UV curable, little solder, uh, little uh, UV torch, then to cure the mask in about a minute is, is what it'll take. Um, get yourself some flux, some decent flux, um, some gel flux, tacky gel flux, uh, it's better than the kind of pen stuff. Um, also, we're going to touch up the heat sink, so you want some heat sink compound. Um, you can use Arctic Ice or one of the more expensive compounds because I use a lot of it I just buy these tubes from ORS. But with that there's some, kind of some of the components you're going to need. You're obviously going to need a solder and iron and uh, it'd be no harm to have a hot glue gun even though I don't like using the hot glue guns. Um, we'll see if we can get away without it but uh, it might be handy to have a hot glue gun lying around. So guys, the first thing you're going to need to do is to hook up your Arduino Nano by USB to your computer. And then you're going to go to need, need to go to this page, uh, the Arduino uh, website, where you can download the IDE to program your um, Arduino with the, with the code needed. Um, I'll leave links to all this below in the description, uh, so you guys can jump on over there and check it out. So um, yeah, you just basically select whatever version suits your OS. Um, once you have that done, you're going to need to download the code. So um, here's the Arduino um, plus plus uh, page on um, GitHub, the repository uh, by Suko Pera. And uh, basically I'd strongly advise reading through all of this before you actually download the code. Uh, with that said, you can just jump over to the code branch and uh, download or clone the branch. Then you're going to need to jump over here to uh, Sega 16 form and uh, user, sorry if I mispronounce your name, Keropi, uh, has done a version of the uh, Mega Drive Plus Plus switchless uh, region. And uh, he's got some great photos of what he did on his PAL version of the board. Um, so it's definitely worth checking this out. Um, he's even done some pinout and some uh, wiring diagrams. Uh, the important thing to mention here is that you're going to have to uh, double check your revision of the board, your version of the board, because especially with the reset line, um, it may be different on your version. Um, you should be able to find that information on SMS Power or here on Sega 16. Um, there's a lot of forums out there that have some great detail on all the different uh, board revisions. You'll be able to get schematics and service manuals for um, most revisions of the Mega Drive. Uh, there's some great documentation out there. Now I mightn't have mentioned it earlier on but you can see here in line with your LED you're actually going to need a 220 ohm resistor. Um, that and I kind of assumed that people would have a multimeter at hand but I didn't mention it in the previous section but there are things you're going to need. So after kind of digesting all this, uh, doing research on your own uh, revision of the motherboard, um, you should be able to uh, find everything you need uh, from these three pages. So once you have that done, you're going to need to fire up your uh, Arduino IDE with having previously connected your uh, Arduino Nano. If you go to Tools, uh, Board, and select your board, uh, uh, your Arduino Nano board from uh, 
the menu there. Then you're going to need to set your COM port. Now mine's coming up as COM port 1. I don't actually have my Arduino hooked up at the moment. Um, mine comes up as COM port 5. If you're unsure what uh, COM port uh, your Arduino is currently hooked up to, you can find that out by going into Device Manager in Windows. And if you go into your USB devices, you should it should come up as a gen generic USB device in the list there. And if you right click on that and go to Properties, you will see uh, which, which COM port it's using. With that said, here's our code. Uh, again, big shout out to the authors. It's an open source project. Um, so you can verify the code and then upload it to your board and that should be you done. Uh, everything else from here on out will actually be hands on with the solder and iron and uh, uh, with the craft knife cutting those traces. Uh, you may need to come back in here in the future but it's very doubtful you should uh, once, your, uh, once your code is uploaded to your Arduino you should be fine. So guys here we have the Mega Drive. I've just taken the screws out of the case and if we flip this down just to be careful with the cable you may see that I've done a little bit, bit of a clean up before on this the RF shield I gave it a rub with some really fine sandpaper in areas and um, sprayed it with a, a metallic uh, silver paint and then I sprayed it with a clear lacquer just in case it ever uh, uh, started to delaminate or something like that but um, it's in great shape, so I'll just strip it down to the board and we'll have a look at the uh, jumpers and uh, the reset line and where we're actually going to be doing our little uh, cutting the traces and that. So guys, I've got the board out. Um, we, you can see over here um, our jumpers. Um, I'll just grab my tweezers so I can point them out better. So we have are two jumper settings here um, that traces here need to be cut and um, oh, I'll just show you the version of the board it's actually the same one that you'll find in the tutorial that I link um, the one that's on, one of the ones in the instruction section on github um, the only thing is since I did a bit of a cleanup on this board recently I already did the uh, replace the thermal uh, compound on the um, heat sinks here but they're quite easy to do. Um, you just need to take off this. Um, uh, you need to take off the heat sink to get at the back of the voltage regulator. So you undo the two screws, um, and there should be two more screws. Um, this one here that goes through the PCB. And once you've that done, I'd actually suggest taking these off first, and then um, you can take off. Um, these two guys here um, then with some alcohol and a q-tip you can clean the back of the uh, voltage regulators and uh, apply some new thermal paste and put the uh, put the heat sink back on so yeah um, so they're the two first traces we're going to cut again um, you don't want to hack these you want to with a very sharp um, craft knife or scalpel or um, razor just slowly using your multimeter testing it just keep keep in the same cut you don't want to hack um, too much into it um, I've seen mega drives in the past where people have just destroyed this area completely um, by hacking into it you just want to gently um, just keep cutting until the tr uh, you'll feel the trace being cut but just keep checking it with your um, with your multimeter in continuity mode and and as soon as it's it's not beeping you know you have your job done but don't don't hack it don't don't overdo it it's okay guys i'm going to try and get you a decent shot of uh, these jumpers here and um, so we were cutting the two center lines now just to note i got my um craft knife out and i put a new blade on it just so i get nice cuts now I only really need to go over that single cut maybe four or five times just gently and I have my multimeter probes here and I have it in set in continuity mode so you hear the beep there just test it again so if I check here we have no continuity and here no continuity. 
So guys, before I um, finish uh, wiring up the actual Arduino, um, if you look here, um, I've kind of put a bit of captain tape over the actual solder points for the jumpers there, and the place where I cut the traces is down the centre. So what I'm going to do now is, um, and this is complete overkill, you don't really have to do this, is I'm going to put some of my um, solder mask over the top to seal up that area again. Uh, I'm going to give it a quick wipe with alcohol, and then I'm going to seal it up with this and use the UV cure. Okay, so I've applied the solder mask and I'm just going to put it away now. And we're probably going to hit it with some UV light. So I'm just going to hit it maybe for 30 seconds with the UV light. So guys, it's been about just over a minute now since I held the light in it and I'm just going to put my finger in. Um, that seems to have set. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's decent stuff. I didn't know if my little torch would uh, do the job, but it seems to have done the job. Now that's complete overkill. You don't have to do that. I'm, I'm a bit mad in the head for doing that, but I'll probably have other applications for the solder mask as well. Okay, I'm just take off the captain tape and just in case there was any under the lip, I might hold it for another 30 seconds on there. So it seals it up, I guess, those cuts, but as I said before, it is kind of, you could consider it overkill. So after this, um, we're going to do the reset line. So I'm just going to try that now. Yeah, that seems to have set. So, cool. I'll uh, flip the board over and I'll show you the reset line. So, okay guys. Um, so, we are locating the uh, reset line. So, we have the um, joy ports here. That's the solder points for them. And if we travel over here, you can see these four uh, solder points here that I'm highlighting. Um, that's the reset switch on the other side. And if we go to the bottom two and follow that trace over, you see that it passes over here towards uh, C80, which is unpopulated. Now, it may be populated on your board. I don't know. But um, you can kind of see it there. So we're going to be cutting it just here. Um, I'm going to do the same procedure as I did before with the um, cleaning it and just putting a dab of solder mask there. I'm not necessarily going to show that now, you've kind of seen it once and how it goes. And uh, once we're done there, I'm going to prep the Arduino. Um, there's no point in really kind of showing you too much soldering, but um, yeah, I'll prep the Arduino and I'll show you how I've uh, done the wiring layout. So guys, I've written down some notes on um, the pinout and uh, how the wiring is going to go. Um, so I'm just going to start getting the Arduino Nano wired up. I do have some of um, this Adafruit, um, let me just see, Adafruit wire. Um, it's 22 gauge, might be a bit big, but if not, I'll uh, resort back to my Alpha Wire uh, 26 gauge and use that instead. So once I've got all the um, once I've got, is it going to come into focus? Come on, you can do it. Once I've got um, the Arduino um, all wired up, I'll come back and I'll show it to you. Um, we'll mount it on the board and then we'll terminate um, the cables. I'll try and keep the cables as short as possible. So guys, if you look over here, I have um, some neoprene, uh, one-sided sticky tape neoprene put down. and. Um, it's a bit of a mess of wires right now, the Arduino, but the idea would be that I'm going to put a dab of hot glue and just stick the Arduino down there. Now, I didn't want to use hot glue, but uh, the fact that the neoprene is underneath it, it'll kind of uh, stop the glue from damaging the board. And I'll try and use just enough glue. Um, I don't want to use too much and make a mess. So we'll just use a small bit of hot glue just to stick it down there. Once that's done, I'll run the wires and uh, I'll show you how everything goes. 
So guys, you can see the Arduino Nano mounted there now for the Mega Drive Plus Plus mod. Um, it's got the uh, controller port cables, uh, so you can control the um, reset and region from the control pad. And um, it's also got these wires here that basically do the reset line. Um, they kind of come up and I've kind of taped them down to the board there with some Captain tape. But um, yeah, it's it's not as neat as I'd hoped. It's still fairly neat though. Um, but um, here's the LED, the RGB LED. Now I left the legs fairly long in it. Um, that might be a problem. I might be able to just bend uh, these legs up. But I've used uh, heat shrink everywhere where I can. But the reason why I've left this pretty long is because... I am actually going to cut it in the middle somewhere here and I'm waiting on some uh, crimp um, to arrive and I'm going to actually crimp this cable and have a connector here um, so that when you open it up it's going to be easier to just kind of disconnect it um, if you want to kind of do maintenance or clean up in there. So I'm just going to leave it like this for now and when um, my connectors and crimping stuff arrives I'm going to crimp up that. So. I basically use like um, 22 gauge wire, so red, green, blue, and black for common. So yeah, the next thing is to test it out. Yeah, I'll probably just end up uh, just kind of uh, bending this um, if it's if it's a case that it's too um, it's too high. You can kind of see the height of it there. I'll probably just bend it so that kind of the lead faces in like this with this bent up so yeah we'll try that so the next thing to do is to um, fire it up and uh, see how everything goes so guys I've got it hooked up I'm using Streets of Rage 1 as a test um, we're in PAL mode now with the green light on so I'm just gonna hold in the reset button turn blue so you can see NTSC has kicked in straight away so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold um, on the control pad I'm just gonna hold a B and start and it resets the game which is very cool and we're still in blue mode so hmm try it again We'll go to. Okay, we're in red mode now. I'm gonna do the. Oh, you can already see it change to Japanese. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. So, it's working. I think blue mode is US. Another thing we want to test out is if we switch off the console. What I want to see is just to check in the heat on the thing. It's it's fine. Um, what I want to see is if it comes on, will it be blue? And it is. Scart NTSC. Pretty cool. So Sonic the Hedgehog test. Okay. We're in PAL mode. Nice. So let's switch mode. Oh, that's instantly noticeable. Perfect. Sweet. So, okay, I'm going to do the reset trick. Very cool. And um, we'll just for the laugh of it switch to Asian mode. Pretty cool.
Yeah, and I haven't banjaxed any of the controllers either. Very responsive. Yeah. So, guys. The Mega Drive Plus Plus mod is a great success. It's pretty cool the way you get the, the light on that. So, okay. I'm going to put it back in its case now. That's working perfect. Uh, once it's back in the case, I'll get a... Uh, Maybe try out Streets of Rage 2 or another kind of multi-region cart. So guys, before I put the uh, modded Mega Drive back into its case here, I want to uh, maybe clean up this case a bit more. Um, one of the things I've used already is um, Maguire's Plastics. Um, as advised by Gadget UK, I'll put a link to his channel, it's pretty good stuff. Um, this is definitely recommended using. Check out his channel, he's got some great videos on kind of restorations and stuff. Um, but I was wa watching a video from an American gentleman where he did a restoration on a Commodore 64 that he found in a field. But he's been doing other kind of retro bike projects and he turned me on to this stuff. Um, 303 Aerospace Protectant. And apparently this stops um, plastics from yellowing. But I've used it on other stuff since I've got it, and it's actually really good for kind of finishing off uh, rather than a polish. So I've used the plastics. I'm going to just wipe it down with some glass cleaner, like window lean, and then I'm going to give it a spray of this, and that should have it looking jazzy. I ended up using a small bit of hot glue in the end. You can see there just to hold the new LED in. Um, I've got pr plenty of slack here so that I can crimp it later on to make it a bit more accessible and serviceable. Um, but I have these little stickers that came with the Arduino. So um, I think we're going to put one inside the case somewhere. So I like this one. Hacked. Maybe. And I'll put the um, Arduino one, the Arduino logo, maybe on the bottom of the case. Uh, once I've applied uh, 303. But yeah, we might put that little hacked one. Um, where to put it? I think I might put it on the um, 68000. So it cleaned up very well with the old 303. Um, don't know about you guys, but I think it looks pretty cool. So yeah, um, to finish things off, I am going to put the other sticker on there in case anyone else inherits this machine. I'm planning on holding on to it, but just in case. Got our little Arduino sticker there. So it should give them a hint as to what might have been done inside. So guys, I've got the uh, Mega Drive open again. Um, I had a little bit of trouble with um, resetting the console and setting the region from the control pad. So I figured the, jo the solar joints in the bottom are either not great or they're just, um, they could actually, one could be shortened. So you may notice there on the actual Arduino, if I press start, see the LED come on? So it comes on when I press the button. So start works, A works, B works, C works, um, I press down, that works, up, that works, left, that works, and right. So I think what, what's wrong is I need to touch up the solder joints there. Now, as you can see here, I crimped a little connection so that you can easily open the, the case. So what I believe is happening is when I put the RF shield on, um, it's kind of pressing up against the bottom of, um, it's pushing the, the, the actual uh, control port uh, connection here into the RF shield and shorten maybe one of the connections. So I will might have a look at them. If there's any that look a bit, where the solder joints look a bit cold, I'll touch them up. And I may put some captain tape on the board and on the, um, and on the actual uh, um, RF shield itself to stop it from shorting out. But um, that's just something worth mentioning. 
So I put some captain tape on the bottom of the board and on the RF shield. I checked everything out. I cleaned the cartridge port again just while I was here. And I'm going to put it back together now. Um, what I'm going to check next is I think it might have actually been my control pad. My control pad might be a little dirty. So I'm going to take that apart, give it a cleaning, and we'll try again. So guys, I opened up the controller and you might be able to see it. There's kind of a white residue around there. Um, you can see some gunk on kind of the contacts there, the button points. I have a strong suspicion that the what's at fault here is the control pad. Now I did clean this, or at least I thought I cleaned this, I mustn't have. Or if I did, I used uh, the wrong kind of uh, solvent. I probably didn't use alcohol, I may have used something else. Um, but with that said, I'll clean it up, we'll get it back together and we'll see how we get on. So guys, I've got it back together now, I've checked everything out, I've cleaned the control pad, I've rechecked all the wiring in here and I'm just about to put it back together. But, if you're doing this mod, um, I decided to go this direction, uh, here by the expansion port with my cables that run across to the control pad, just to keep my wires short. But if I was doing this again, and I may actually revisit this, you've got tons of room um, to go the other way. Um, if you came across the top here from where the Arduino is here beneath the shield and come up here because you actually have some gaps underneath the board here so you've got some space around here that you can bring your cables across okay guys so I've all my uh, woes and kind of troubles uh, figured out so the reset buttons functioning now if you tap it it just resets as normal and you can cycle through by holding it down so on the control pad here if you press A, B, C and start, uh, that will reset it. If you hold start, B and right, that will give you PAL. Start, B and down, um, that will give you um, NTSC Japan. And if you do start, B and uh, left here, you'll get um, uh, NTSC America. So that was the Mega Drive Plus Plus mod. I'm happy enough with the way it went. Uh, for me, a nice way to celebrate uh, the 30th anniversary of the Sega Mega Drive. Um, I hope you enjoyed it too, and if you're thinking of doing this mod, I highly recommend it. Um, it's fairly non-destructive, and uh, it's just a, a nice addition. It means you can still use all your, um, your accessories, your 32X, your Mega CD, and uh, uh, keep things kind of simple without cutting the case and that. Um, yeah, I highly recommend it. So, happy birthday to the Sega Mega Drive, 30 years old. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll chat to you all again.